I'm Aaron Maté, sitting in for Jimmy Dore here with Misha Pollan and Americans comedian Kurt Metzger. And the Kremlin has just been attacked with a drone. The Kremlin says that Ukraine was behind this with U.S. support. Ukraine says that Russia could be responsible for a false flag and U.S. experts are backing that up too. Allegations are flying. Things are dangerous. And so you think in this moment we'd be looking for ways to calm down tensions and even engage in diplomacy. Well, Senator Tom Cotton is not interested in diplomacy right now. He wants us actually to prepare for war. And he's concerned that we are not – that we are overestimating Russia's military capability and that we should be factoring that into our plans for war with Russia. This is what he said. Um, So it's fair to say, based on the the fact that we now know we overestimated Russia's capabilities as of last February, and we've seen their forces degraded to the point it will take years to rebuild them, that uh, they are a much weaker fighting force than we thought 14 months ago, right? That that is what we currently assess, yes. Shouldn't our operational plans uh, about a potential war with Russia in Europe then be changed to reflect that new understanding? So see what he's saying? We should be planning for war with Russia, and we sh- and those plans should reflect the fact that Russia is weaker than we thought they were. So accordingly, we should it should be easier for us to engage in war with Russia because they're not as strong as we thought they were as the war in Ukraine shows. That's what he's saying here. So they don't have nukes. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I guess we're supposed to not wow. factor that in. I think I think in the purview of uh, of U.S. European Command and the Department of Defense, they're they're looking looking at all that, Senator. Yeah. Okay, so um, they, it, let's say that's true, and their normal conventional forces are utterly degraded. Yeah, wouldn't that make you go to the nukes a lot quicker than if you had really <laughs> exactly. strong nuclear? Yeah, exactly, exactly. And recently, and we played this on the show, there was a general, the head of European Command, actually said that Russia's ground force is larger than it was at the start of the war. But apparently, that doesn't matter to Senator Cotton. Need to urgently because one of the reasons we've heard on this committee uh, about the slow pace at which we're so delivering certain weapons is that our operational plans require it. And if our operational plan in Europe is based on what we thought Russia was capable of 14 months ago versus what they are capable now, it badly needs to be revisited. Um, Director Haynes, one final line. So what he's saying there is we are delivering weapons to Ukraine at too slow a pace and we're delivering those weapons at that pace based on the false belief that Russia's military is strong when actually they've shown us that they're weak. So accordingly, we need to update our analysis uh, so that we can deliver weapons to Ukraine even faster than we already well, have. That's I what mean, he's saying. In fairness to his point, Ukraine does sell off like 70% of them and skim it <laughs> off the top. So it must be like that. <laughs> they only need like 30% of what we're giving them. And Senator Khan doesn't just want us to think about war with Russia in Europe, but also in the Middle East as well. Questions about Russia. They've gotten a lot more aggressive towards the United States recently. We all remember the Black Sea incident in one of in one of their aircraft the, down. Remember their plane peed on our drone? <laughs> <laughs> An MQ-9 drone. The head of U.S. Air Force's Central Command recently said that Russia is, quote, increasingly bellicose towards American aircraft in Syria, suggesting they even are, are looking for a fight. They're spoiling for a dogfight. And then third, the head of uh, European Command, General Cavoli, recently noted that Russian submarines have gotten more active in the Atlantic than they have been in years. Uh, One, um, are there other instances of growing Russian aggression? And two, um, why do what's the intelligence community's assessment for why Russia has grown increasingly aggressive in these ways? Can we address this in closed session? Sure. Okay. Thank you. Can we not talk about World War III in public? Uh-huh. That's what she's basically saying. And notice how all of his examples of where Russia is getting more aggressive are all places where the U.S. is not invited. So in Syria, the U.S. is illegally occupying one third yeah. of Syria. Russia is there at the invitation of Syria, but somehow it's Russia that's being aggressive with the U.S. There. Uh, that's I was watching this uh, this maniac on uh, value tainment. I don't even remember his dumb name. He's talking about China. How he was warning we got to blow up China years ago, basically. And he goes, he's talking about, you know what they call our, uh, what it was, the aircraft carriers? Uh, they, they call them targets. <laughs> <laughs> and he's also how aggressive they're being towards our encircled bases around them. <laughs> they're getting aggressive. Yeah. America is the guy that shot Trayvon Martin. That's what we are. Exactly. We're that guy. Exactly. Exactly. Um, here's more from Cotton. And this was back when uh, Russia uh, targeted a U.S. drone over the Black Sea, which is, again, in Russia's area. The Black Sea is not near the U.S. And Senator Cotton wanted a forceful response. 
This is yet another dangerous provocation by Russia brought about by years of President Biden's weakness. And it's not just Russia. We've seen this with other countries as well. China dangerously buzzes our aircraft in the South China Sea. His weakness uh, on this, his strongest beyond all belief point of giving them too much. Iran is down drone in the Persian Gulf. Russia also uh, dangerous. Again, all these U.S. drones and U.S. Uh, military equipment, they're being targeted in the regions of the country that he's calling the aggressor. He it's dangerous. <laughs> Them tro those drones had a family. <laughs> he harasses our manned aircraft in, uh, off the Alaska coast and uh, in the eastern Mediterranean. So President Biden needs to come out and forcefully make it clear that we will not tolerate this kind of provocative action. If we don't put our foot down and Russia downs one of our unmanned aircraft, we will invite Russia or China, Iran, to perhaps down one of our manned aircraft. So what can we do? Well, first, they should put up uh, another drone today on the exact same flight pattern in the same airspace to make it clear we will not be intimidated from flying in that airspace. Second, we should return <laughs> Second, the U.S. He should go right up to Putin and hold his finger like this and go, I'm not touching you. I'm not touching you. What? I'm not <laughs> Navy back to the Black Sea. President Biden bugged out last year as Vladimir Putin invaded Ukraine, but NATO has more Black Sea coastline than Russia does. And third, we should make it clear that we're going to do what we should have done long ago, which is provide Ukraine with the weapons they need to strike Russian rocket and artillery systems across the border that are shooting into Ukraine. Or maybe hit the Kremlin. We need to give them drones. <laughs> Those three steps would send a clear signal to Russia that we will not tolerate this kind of dangerous provocation and avoid further escalation. And here he is trying to tell us that we should not be worried about nuclear war with Russia. So, I mean, we always need to be mindful about our nuclear adversaries, uh, Russia and China in particular, as we were throughout the Cold War. Um, thus far, we haven't seen any evidence uh, of Russia Use, moving its tactical nuclear weapons, smaller uh, nuclear weapons that can fit on something as small as an artillery shell or a mortar round for what have you, not intercontinental missiles. Um, but it's something we need to be mindful of. At the same time, as I explained in Only the Strong, we also can't be uh, scared into submission about it, just like we weren't during the Cold War. Um, the way to deter aggression, whether it's the conventional aggression of tanks and artillery, and aircraft that you see in Ukraine or nuclear aggression is to be strong and resolute. You, you, oh my dear God. So let's be mindful of nuclear war as we also continue to provoke it. What was the left's plot, by the way, to undermine our... Oh, that's... Because <laughs> I don't even know who he's calling the left. I assume he's talking about the shitlib left who are like all, all aboard for a nice uh, bipartisan war games with China. Exactly. We're telling jokes in Nashville, Honolulu, Los Angeles, Northampton, Massachusetts, Syracuse, Cohoes, New York, Hartford, Connecticut, Baltimore, Chicago, Rosemont, San Diego, and more. Go to JimmyDoor.com to see, get a link for all those tickets. Plus, you can watch my new special, COVID Lies Are Funny. <laughs> <laughs>